One of the things that a lot of people have asked me about is how you really get these fish. We know they're here, but you know, there's a lot of small secrets that help. One of the things that I like to look at particularly is the way to catch them in the drift. Now, sometimes the canal is running, sometimes it's not, but it's very important to be able to put the lure right in front of their nose. Remember, these fish are not really that hungry. They're well fed. There's piles of pellets going in and they look really good when you get them. So they do still have this bite reflex because they're fish. When they see some food coming down, they open their mouths and they just suck on it. But they're unlikely to chase it a long way. Now we can use this to our advantage. It's most important when we're setting out our soft baits to set them up into the current and allow them to come down onto the fish's nose. It's very tempting sometimes to get a very heavy jig on the front because that'll push uh, it out further when you're doing a cast. And it's great to have that nice long cast. However, when it goes into the water, it sinks to the bottom just a bit quick. Line control is just so important. You know, I just find I'm just going to constantly, especially in here, you've got to constantly change it. You've got to. There's just so many different currents. Yeah. It's worse than fly fishing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But if you can keep it nice and tight, what a difference it makes to the, the, to feel. the, the feel. It's all about feel. This is feel fishing, isn't it? Totally and absolutely. The taps are just so much stronger if you've got a good line. Good line yeah, line. absolutely. And you can set a hook there. I think a lot of people get taps and they don't even know that they're getting those bites and it's because they haven't got the line nice and tight. Oh, yeah. And that uh, braid of course is such an important part of what you do because it gives an extremely good feel of being so light. And of course the other thing is a very light jig head. Mm. The fact that we're using sixteenths or is it sixteenth you've got at the moment? Sixteenth of an ounce. Uh, it's pretty darn light. But what it means is that it allows the lure to flutter and and move that much better. If there's too much weight, there is inertia as it comes in. As you can see it coming in, just the way it looks so attractive. Yeah, absolutely. Getting the appropriate size jig head is really important. And I like to use quite a light jig. So I'll go 12th of an ounce, maybe even a 16th of an ounce. Today, it's not running very fast, so we're using a 16th of an ounce. And it sounds so light, but when it gets out into the water, it just flutters nicely. It comes onto the fish's nose, and they're more likely to take it. Remember, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these fish to bite our lure. That slow wind is so important too. Most people are tempted to widen really quickly, and that's not the way to do it. You're much, much better to let the fish come on quite quietly. Don't move it too fast. These fish are all sitting in the current. They're well fed, so they don't need to pursue very much. Now, the other part of the component is just how softly they might take. Because you see, they're not pursuing this and grabbing it, rather they're letting it come to them and just mouthing it. I need to be able to feel that, so it's most important to keep as straight a line as possible to the jig head and the bait that's in the water. And to make that happen, I'm constantly doing little maneuvers to keep that line as straight as possible so that I've got complete contact to the soft bait and the jig. I do this by continually mending, continually meaning, looking at the line in the water, and I'm only just retrieving it very, very slowly because I want it to come right onto where the fish is at. And if you're patient and you do it right, you'll get lots of bites. And you might get some that just bite at it and don't actually take it, and then all of a sudden, you'll get that big head shake. And boy, that's the exciting bit. Constantly moving the rod, just to keep that line as tight as you possibly can. Oh, I've got a bite, huh? Got another one? Hmm. Sometimes you sort of get almost gun shy. And you're sort of like, ooh, I'm so keyed up. Can't wait. Here we go. What have we got? There we go. Bit of activity. Oh, yeah. Not necessarily the world's largest fish, but still a fish nonetheless. The great thing about these little fish is that it gives you a, a feel for the way that they take. Fish excited by the soft bait that you got. 
It's a very large brown trout, I'd That's say. A good brownie. <laughs> <laughs> but hard to concentrate on the delivery when there's when there's the excitement going there. I'll just zoom up on that one. That's huge. He has two. It's been a bit difficult trying to get this whole thing up to you on the uh, YouTube here because, of course, in the background, these big fish are being caught. Come on down, you'll enjoy these canals. I tell you, the fishing is fantastic. Good man. Is it a bit bigger? Yeah. Sardine. Hey, still good fun. Yeah, as long as you're catching fish, it's all right, isn't it, eh?